Uh, hello everybody, my name is Alamander and I'm an AP mid main on the North America server. I currently am plat 1 in solo queue and I'm quickly approaching diamond 5 by using one of my favorite champions in the game, Swain. The reason I'm making this guide is I feel that most players don't play Swain due to a lack of understanding on what the champion is really capable of. I have managed to achieve number one Swain in the world according to Elo Buff, and although that changes weekly, I, I consider it quite the accomplishment. And I really want to help people understand my favorite champion in the game. So, uh, a lot of people ask me when I play tourney games or solo queue or even ranked fives, why do you main Swain? What does he offer that other champions don't? And why do we never see him in competitive if he's really as powerful of a champion as you say he is? To answer the first question, Swain's role is extremely unique. He's a damage over time mage, he can be a tank, he can be an initiator, a peeler, or even a burst mage. Uh, he also is amazing to gank. His lane is really easy to gank due to his high amounts of crowd control. He's the only champion that can make Ignite do more damage than it should combined with his Torment, and has two forms of semi-reliable CC, one of which is an AoE Snare. For the sake of time, I'm not going to be going over every little bit about his skills. I would expect that anybody watching this video has done a little bit of research or tried the champion at least once before. So what does he offer that other champions don't, and why don't we see him in play like LCS? Well, these two are kind of the same answer. He snowballs lanes, but there are very few things that a 0 and 4 Swain can do. Unlike other mids, his farm is jeopardized heavily if he falls behind due to his short range. Alternatively, if he's given an advantage, he can be near impossible to push out of his lane under the right circumstances. This is a larger risk than players at LCS may want to take. It tells the opponents to camp your lane, and if they succeed, you will be at a, low level, a much lower level of usefulness all around because of it. So now that I've gone into what Swain is as a champion, let's move on to playing him. First I'm going to bring up a couple rune sets that I, I use when I play Swain, and I, I use about four, because each time you do kind of need a different mentality going into a lane. So moving over to runes. First I have the Power Victor rune page, which is I use also for Victor, obviously, by name. But it is mostly ability power. It's all scaling ability power with flat AP quints and magic pen marks. I would use this in a confident lane, like if I was going against an Ari, for say, because Ari do loses pretty hard to Swain in lane. So that's when I would use this particular page. It's, it's very, very upfront, and you are going to be building tanky most of the time anyway, but I'll be going into item builds later in this video. Alternatively, I do have the uh, my Vladimir page, which involves flat AP blues, flat AP quints, scaling uh, scaling health per level yellows, and our magic pen marks. This combined lets you have a much powerful level six to nine. You have a lot more health to bring to the table, and that's probably why you're seeing. You know, if if you're gonna do a heavy roam, this is a decent rune set to uh, to also run. Alternatively, I do have an aggressive page, which involves move speed and split pen marks because auto-attacking is such a key part of what you do as Swain, and I'll be going into that much later in the video. Uh, this also has your seals that are armor and your glyphs that are ability power, so this is more geared towards the top lane, but it could still be used mid lane. Uh, you never know when you're going to be out going up against an AD mid because that is kind of a... It's kind of a thing at the moment, so you, you do have to be prepared for that. And then a standard AP page also would work fine, and that is your 15 uh, ability power out of your AP flat quints, your armor seals, your magic resistance blues, and your magic pen marks. So now I'm going to take a look at some masteries. Masteries are very straightforward for Swain. You're going to want typical uh, mage masteries, uh, standard ability power 21.9. This is going to give you flat health, some, some scaling health, a little bit of armor or magic resistance depending on what your lane requires and then you get the offensive tree including executioner spell sword and the percent based ability power increase because you, it's very rare that you will be ever be getting a death cap on Swain which I'll go into later and the only other rune page that I actually run is when I'm top lane I do run a 1614 and this is for certain aggressive fighting top lane champions that could utilize uh, that I could utilize the block mechanic out of the defensive tree against that I really don't need Executioner for. So this is an option. I usually go with a much heavier page when I am top lane. Uh, top lane Swain is a niche pick. 
so it's not standard, but 1614 does give me what I need to do to win lane and to not die to ganks. So that's that's really what you got to focus on. Swain does excel mid lane over top lane, but he is a very good counter pick as well. So now I'm going to go into, I mean, summoner spells. Ignite is pretty standard. You really have to have it on Swain. Uh, there's no reason not to when Torment increases the true damage that it deals. So that's very, very important. Uh, Flash Ignite is the only really great combo on Swain. Teleport can be used, but I would only use Teleport if if you're going to have a jungle in your lane for most of the game. That can make up for the, the fact that you're not going to be able to clean up kills with that Ignite at that point. So moving on to item sets, uh, this is my just general Swain. To be a lane bully, to start lane, uh, you can go Doran's two pot. Now this doesn't give you a ward, but there are multiple ways that I'll discuss later in the video to deter ganks with even without a ward as Swain. So here's your lane bully, and the Doran's ring passive is amazing. The extra four gold upon killing a unit because it stacks with Swain's passive, which is ten gold per unit and it scales per level so I level 2 it's 11 moving and further up further up so that's going to give you a lot of lane sustain alternatively if you are really worried about getting camped like sometimes you know sometimes you are the fairy charm 4 pot 1 ward 1 mana potion is a good start as well it kind of allows you to have a little bit more vision and have some more sustain it's more of a Jace-based start, in all honesty. It's a very you see a lot of Jace players start like this because it is safe. It's sustaining and it does pretty much everything he needs. So, moving on to our core items, Rod of Ages is very core on Swain. There are only a few games that I I play that I don't get it on. Most of them are when I'm top lane or when I'm very 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 far ahead. So, Boots One and Rod of Ages are very core, and throughout this this uh these item sets I don't ever say upgrade boots now that's not because you shouldn't you should definitely be upgrading boots but I don't want to tell you to get sorcerer boots because that's not the most important thing on Swain y if they have a CC team you're gonna want merc treads if they have uh, an AD team you're gonna want ninja tabi if they have tons of slows you might even want swiftness boots and if you want to roam all the time you might want mobility boots so I'm not gonna say that you're, you're going to want Sorcerer Boots all the time, because most of the time, I don't get Sorcerer Boots. Keep in mind, Swain is a upfront mage, and you will be taking damage. So any stat mitigation, even 20 magic resistance, is, is a lot when you're something as heavily sustaining as a Swain. Speaking of sustain, uh, Morellos and healing debuffs and Executioner's Calling, they are very, very deadly to Swain. If you're doing well in laning phase and the other team starts building against you, which does happen, this is the build that I personally use. Rylai's, uh, Leandri's Torment, Zonia's Hourglass, and uh, and the Ice Shard. Shard of True Ice, my bad. Uh, and Shard of True Ice is, is a... It's, everyone kind of gives me a look for that one, but it is the only upgrade out of Kage's that keeps the gold pretend passive and you know allows you to use a very nice active between the active of that and the rylize you're very sticky and you don't really go anywhere so that's important plus the zonias does keep you safe uh realistically you won't get to that far into a build most of the time but you know there there are some games that you know go very very long plus if you pick up the kages early enough it is very useful so that's what I use against teams that have healing debuffs, mostly for the flat health between Rod Eyes and Rod of Ages. Does very, very good work. Uh, versus AP heavy teams, and by uh, what I mean by AP heavy teams, I mean four out of the five are predominantly ability power. So against an AP heavy team, I would probably run Spirit Massage and Spectral Wraith as my first two pickups. Uh, this put together gives you not only the spell vamp and the extra healing that Sphere of Visage gives you, it also gives you 30% cooldown reduction as well. So if you if you are throwing on, let's just say, your blue buff as well, you're at 40% and you're good to go. Plus, you know, there's generic st tank stats that are with the Sphere of Visage, 200 health and 50 magic resistance, which is very, uh, very useful, especially on this champion. Uh, I threw an Abyssal Scepter on there because that is your form of magic pen when you're building against an AP heavy team. 
and it gives you a little bit of tank stats as well because this this particular build does not really bring too much magic pen to the table. And Twin Shadows, I have that as well, in case you want to pick up that Kage's earlier. Swain's biggest problem is he gets kited, but the uh, the active hunt on Twin Shadows really helps that, plus the 6% movement speed is a very, very good pickup, especially on Swain. So, against an AD heavy team, you would pr your core is going to be Zonia's, Leandri's. Uh, those are going to be your two big, big purchases. Uh, Spectrite's good, and then I have Thornmail and Frozen Heart. Now, a lot of people look at me weird when I say Thornmail and Swain, uh, but it, if they have a four-person team that is four people that are AD, Thornmail is a good pickup. Keep in mind, Thornmail it damage is increased by Torment, if Torment is on the target, not to mention that uh, it is a, it's a lot of just flat armor, and you will be focused. You have to be focused, and you're going to be sustaining that entire time. So Thormiel also procs Magic Pen, so Leandris is going to help you. And the only downside to it is the lack of CDR, which is why a Frozen Heart sometimes looks better. It also gives you mana, so it really comes down to which you need on your team. But uh, against a generally balanced team, I, I like to have a Zonia's. I like to have, like, Rod Zonies is kind of like my safe place. Rod Zonies, Leandries is, is where you're really strong with Rod Zonies, Leandries. Uh, Spectral Wraith and Archangels. Archangels is hard to stack. It's, you just don't have the cooldowns for it. It's, it's a good item. It really helps with keeping your mana high mid-game, late-game. But uh, realistically, you're not going to get the Seraphs. So if you're just buying it for the Seraph shield, I, I would not count on it. Uh, moving on to top lane hybrids uh, against Swain, or as Swain, I pick up a Man Immune. Now everyone's probably like, what? A Man Immune? But uh, Man Immune gives 1,000 gold when it upgrades, to, or 1,000 uh, mana when it upgrades to Muramana. So, and it stacks on auto attack. Seeing as auto attacks are so predominant in the way you play Swain for maximum efficiency, this becomes a much better buy over time. Now, would it replace Rod of Ages? Probably not for the because you need the flat health, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, Rod of Ages, Muramana, Rylize is a very, very, very strong setup. And it does bring a lot of damage to the table. Remember, single target spells get amplified because of Muramana. That includes Torment, and that includes Decrepify, which is your Q. So everything you have is going to be improved by it. It will hurt your mana consumption. You are, you will drain a lot more mana with it, but it does give you a bigger pool, so it's a trade-off. Uh, other potentially good items on Swain: Archangels I covered, Morella Namicon, non-unique cooldown reduction, very good. Uh, Lich Bane's a lot of fun, though I rarely get a chance to get uh, actually purchase that item because you need the tank stats. That's three thousand gold. You really can't be putting towards that. Uh, Deathfire Grasp can be fun. It does stack really nicely with Torment, but altogether, unless you're really going for a tank melting, there are better choices. And I also have listed the Elixir of Brilliance, which is, is really kind of... I just wanted to take a minute and say how understated this item is. Uh, before level 9, I usually have used at least one Elixir of Brilliance, and that's something that is very important. Very important for a lot of a lot of lanes, like if you can swing your lane, especially on a snowball-based character like Swain, then then the 250 gold is 100% is worth it. But anyway, before I get ahead of myself, uh, let's uh, talk about the actual gameplay. In most games, your R is going to be your priority, then your Torment, then your Q, then your W. Uh, in some games, with lots of gap-closing tanky DPS, you can max the Crepify, which is your Q, your slow first, and then max your E second, and your W last. I would rarely do that, but I have done it multiple times. One thing you should never do is max never move for the farming ability. I did I did some actual research, and I saw a group of people talking about this for the, a method of farming, maxing your W, and I, I just wanted to address this. So I, I want to fully go over farming as Swain because it's what separates your good swains from your bad swains, because I won't lie, his farming mechanic is pretty difficult to get used to, 
but this is no reason to max your W for wave clear. You can use Q as a farming tool, that's the Decrepify, or other known, otherwise known as Laser Bird. Uh, when a minion's at like 30 health or so at level 1, you can use the initial first damage over time tick from your Q to actually pick up the last hit in laning phase. Uh, this allows you to last hit two targets at once, one with an auto attack and one with your Q, if they're both getting low at comparable rates. Just remember, for every four minions you kill if you started Doran's Ring, your Q cost is free. This also applies to your Harass from E, and Swain's passive does actually increase over time, so it's gaining an extra mana per level, so that's not going anywhere. Uh, at, after, after level 6, know that one wave of birds from your ult will make it so you can last hit caster minions under tower, and that means so you get one wave of uh, one wave of your alt birds on something, and then the tower attacks it, and then you auto attack it, and it'll be yours. Uh, and the same concept applies, except it's two tower attacks for uh, your melee minions. Also, at level six, you can drag melee and caster minions together to land a six-target W with your alt on. Uh, this is going to clear the, we the wave very quickly. And if you have an extra Dorans or a blue buff, you're not going to really be punished in the mana department for this maneuver. It is kind of aggressive, because if you get ganked while doing it, you're, off, you're on cooldown for a lot of your stuff. But uh, if you have vision or have wards, then it's not that big of a deal. So I, I talked a lot about the combo in lane, how your auto attack is so important. So here's, here's how you maximize your damage as Swain. In lane, you want to land your Torment, which is your E, auto attack, and then retreat. That's, that's your lane combo. After level 3, it's Torment, Decrepify, which is your Q, Auto Attack, Retreat. Now, why am I not using Never Move at all, the W? Well, one thing you have to be sure not to do on Swain is burn both of your crowd control spells unless you're guaranteed that kill. Because Swain's not a heavily mobile champion in early laning phase, you need to hold one of them to protect yourself from a jungle counter gank. Remember, you can hit your dots and walk away if you know how much damage they do. And you won't have to dive under towers for your early game kills that way. Also, I've mentioned it before, but Torment increases Ignite Potency, and don't forget to combo them for kills. It does a lot, a lot of damage. So during mid-game, you should be heavy into roaming. Ward the Wraith Camp bush, regardless of what side you're on. Uh, pre preferably in their jungle, though. Uh, and apply pressure on their jungler as well as, as the mid. Uh, Swain's really good at dueling ju junglers. Just as a general general rule of thumb, he can kite them very hard. Most junglers, including, you know, Amumu, Xin Zhao even, uh, Volibear gets kited. Most champions get kited by Swain because you walk into the Decrepify and it does not work. And if even if it does, then you have to deal with the snare. So... <clears throat> Ganks bot lane are also extremely potent, because landing a full combo on an AD carry at level 9 is almost a guaranteed kill, barring heals, shields, or barrier. Uh, you'll definitely get summoners for, sh you know, it's summoners. Get getting summoners is a guarantee, though, if you land your full combo on something. Remember, although you're blue buff, you're very blue dependent uh, during mid game, you really aren't blue dependent in laning phase. R should be used as a sustaining tool, that you toggle every 6 to 8 seconds for heals, and if you're last hitting properly, this should make your mana issue not that much of a problem. Swain's passive stacking with Doran's Ring is just a wonderful thing, and, and that really does help. Also take note that Swain is not an initiator until he has a defensive item that isn't Roa. Uh, Rod of Ages, sorry. Uh, sustain can be shut down by Ignites. I, I went over that in item builds, how you build health to counter sustain, counter the uh, Morellonomicons or Executioner Callings. Uh, late game, you can play as either... You can play as literally anything late game. Uh, AD Carry Killer, Initiator, a tank, a tank Melting Mage, an Anti-Mage, or a Peeler, depending on what your team really needs. Swain's adaptable building style really opens up multiple jobs that you can do if your team is lacking something. Uh, this will require some getting used to, to what you really need to do in a team. But once you get the hang of it, you can kind of pick what you want to do and you'll get good at doing all of those things. And then you can spec yourself into that with your item builds and etc. Personally, I usually choose to shred tanks because of the innate power of Torment's percent-based damage 
and the Leandres that I usually do have, because that is so, it stacks so very well on Swain. Alright, well, I, that's about all I have for you guys for some Swain 101. Uh, hope to see some more Swan players on the Fields of Justice. Uh, if you guys like this video, please like, subscribe, etc., etc. Also, I will have some links of the streams that support me in the description below. Please check them out as well. Show your love. Uh, and thanks, guys. I'll talk to you guys later.